On the 8th of November 2013, Cyclone Haiyan hit the Philippines. It was the biggest typhoon to strike land since records have been kept, with wind speeds approaching 400 kilometres an hour. Flying into Tuckloba, the first thing that hits you is how neat the housing is, and the blue is the colour of choice for roofs. As you get closer, however, you realise that this is not housing, but tents, and the blue is tarps covering what is left of roofs, and that there are hardly any leaves in the coconut trees. At first glance, Tuckloban Airport looks normal, till you realise the storm surge has pushed the walls out, and that any cars in the car park were the first casualty, not of the winds, but of the storm surge. Driving into Tuckloban, and the extent of the devastation starts to become obvious. Tents are everywhere for housing and relief agencies. Cement power poles have been snapped like twigs. Major buildings have not just been damaged, they've been ripped apart. People lost everything as a cyclone bombarded them for an hour and a half. Melvin, what happened to your house? <laughs> gone. It's gone. Again. Melvin's house was gone, and of course he was just one of the thousands who were unlucky to have been here, but lucky to be alive at all when so many around them had died. Already there was evidence of people grabbing whatever they could to rebuild their lives and start again. But the clean-up was taking time. It had taken two months to clear the roads and for people to come back and just start to drag some sort of order out of the chaos. Children here, yeah, living in this house, this entire area here was part of the storm surge. And they lost their houses, they lost everything. You can see where the children's washed all these areas out. The typhoon has destroyed this building here. Desolation. Piles of tin, wood and refuse were starting to form as people cleared up their lives. But the evidence of what happened here was everywhere to see in what was one of the worst hit areas of the city. It's not a question of how nearly 7,000 people died here. The question is, why wasn't it more? This ship washed the shore. It's too far from the water to get it back now. So now, people are living in it. When houses are so flimsy, where would I have gone if I was here? Something solid. A cathedral maybe. Some place to be safe with solid walls. It would have been a bad choice. The roof collapsed here where hundreds had come for shelter. Each of the purple ribbons represents the life of a person who died here during the cyclone. So many people died in this area that the church converted its front yard into a cemetery. It's hard to walk through this without seeing the hopes and dreams of people buried along with them. Some in mass graves with as many as 12 people buried alongside each other. But bodies were still being found in the wreckage, even when we were there. Relief workers had found a dead baby only the day before. We've just driven for the last 10 minutes. Everywhere, everywhere you see. You cannot film everything that's been destroyed. Everywhere you look, houses are down. You can't get rid of the garbage. The, the garbage is just so huge. And 140 people here make it, trying to make a difference. One thing that touched me was to see how many aid agencies had come to help. Organisations from around the world were here in force two months after the event, still working hard. Some I knew, the United Nations, Red's Cross, but others that I'd never heard of were here giving of their time and money tirelessly to help these people get back on with their lives and to get back on their feet. Tuckloban is built on a peninsula. When the storm surge hit, it came in from both directions at about three metres in height. This man told how the water came up to his ankles on the second floor. He had benefited directly from the money we sent, providing food, mosquito protection and tarps for his home, when he needed it the most. Thank you for your food and mosquito 
There is no way that we as a group have the resources to help rebuild Tuckloban. We may not be able to rebuild the city, but we could help rebuild the lives of some of those who were affected the most. At Leyte Normal University, education is provided for some of the poorest people of the Leyte region. While it is true that we can't help everyone get back on with their lives, the fact is that a little bit of money for us can change a person's life forever. Education makes a difference, not just for now, but to help give people a future. Hi, I'm Lorenz Sevilla from Lady Norman University, taking up Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Um, I came from Tokloban and we are in uh, one of the parts of science who damage from uh, Titan Yolanda and we are asking for you so much, some of your help. Many people lose their loved ones and we are trying to move on and any any money that we, it will come. Hi, I'm Evelyn Aguirre, the Vice President for Academic Affairs of Lady Normal University. Uh, because of Typhoon Yolanda last November, many of our students lost their lives and many of our students really could not come back to the university. So any amount of money or little help coming from you would really make a difference. Thank you so much. Like General MacArthur, who said, I shall return, the people of the Philippines can rebuild their lives. We can't rebuild Tuckloban, but we can help some of its children build a future they could never build alone. <laughs>